Hi, I'm Nawa Kyokazaki from Tokyo Institute of Technology. I'm excited to have an opportunity to give a talk in such a wonderful conference. Today, I'm going to talk about text generation with encoder decoder architecture. This is the outline of my presentation. I will briefly explain how deep learning was applied to natural language processing. And after reviewing the encoder decoder architecture, I will explain two recent studies for enhancing the encoder decoder architecture. The first topic is about improving the performance of headline generation by considering a lossy encoder decoder model with source side prediction module. The second topic is about applying the encoder decoder model for proofread sentence generation with edit operation prediction. So let me explain the current situation of deep learning in NLP. Uh, deep neural networks have made a breakthrough in computer vision a few years ago. As ever, everyone knows, DNN reduced the error rate of image recognition more than 10% in 2012. At first, DNNs had limited impact on NLP because unlike computer vision, uh, natural language have explicit symbols that represent semantic information. Recently, DNN have successfully been applied to NLP, achieving the state-of-the-art performance on most tasks. Our group also used deep learning for various tasks, including uh, language modeling, sentiment analysis, um, semantic parsing, question answering, and so on. The major difference, uh, major factors of the success was to run vector representation of text and generate a text from the representation. Here, I, I show three uh, key points in deep learning for NLP. The first one is a word embedding, where uh, the meaning of each word is represented as a vector. The second one is semantic composition, um, which computes a vector of phrase from its constituent words. And the last one is encoder decoder model, which can generate a sentence from the composed vector. Before explaining the encoder decoder architecture, let me review the process of generating a sentence with a recurrent neural, net, neural language model. We first initialize the input uh, with the uh, uh, input of the hidden layer, and then we feed a start symbol to the uh, network. Then we compose the hidden state and compute a vector with V dimensions, where V is a number of words in the vocabulary. Suppose that the element, the element with the highest value in the vector corresponds to i, then we have uh, yields the word i as an output. Then we feed the previously generated word i to the model and then compose a vector and make prediction for the subsequent words. We repeat this process until we hit a uh, end of a sentence like period. The encoder-decoder model uh, initializes the hidden state uh, of the neural language model uh, with a feature vector composed from the input sequence. The architecture can generate a sentence by en encoding an input sentence into a vector and then uh, make prediction for the sentence, for the output sentence. The architecture is also called a uh, sequence-to-sequence -sequence model and I will omit the detail here, but uh, another innovation called attention mechanism improves the performance of the encoder decoder architecture. It may be well known that the uh, statistical machine translation with a history more than 20 years is being replaced with DNN based approaches, which have history less than five years. Now we are ready to start the first topic reducing odd headline generations. This work is mostly done by Kiono from Tokyo University which is my previous affiliation, and Takase Suzuki and Nagata from NTT. The content of research has already been uploaded on archive. This study addresses the task of headline generation, which was populated by uh, Rush et al. 2015. Here is an example of news article. And this is a headline of a news article, and uh, these are the sentences in the body of an article. The task uh, itself is very simple. Suppose that the uh, headline is hidden. We want to generate uh, this headline from the first sentence in the article. 
the task is a kind of abstractive summarization. And the advantage of this setting is that we have a large number of training data because all we need is a collection of this kind of newspaper articles. It has been very popular to use 9.5 million pairs of headlines and first sentences in gigawatt corpus as supervision data for encoder recorder models. However, the encoder recorder architecture sometimes suffer from odd generation of headline sentences. For example, this is a gold headline for an article, Dear Nuran Group Fashionable Again. But uh, encoder recorder architecture misunderstand the task as generating only the word Duran, 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 Duran. So, um, we sometimes encounter this problem with uh, encoder recorder model, and we call this problem as repeated phrase generation. In the second example, the encoder recorder architecture generates a strange sentence that is irrelevant to the input, like a uh, precise Sarajevo. In the third example, uh, the gold headline includes a detail about the retirement, but the encoder recorder architecture generates only two words, graph retires. This is probably correct, but we want to add more information to the headline. So the goal of this study is to explore how, to, uh, how we can reduce this kind of headline generation. And I will explain two previous attempts to remedy the problem. The first one is coverage. This is a famous paper uh, titled Show, Short Attend and Tell, and which generates a caption from an image. This study divides an input image into 512 blocks and generates a caption by attending 512 feature vectors, each of which correspond to the local feature of a block. The intention of this design to see the image at a fine grain level rather than to see the image as a whole. The model incorporates coverage of attention in the loss function here. So please remind that attention scores are normalized to one at each time step of generation over the block. But this time make sure that the sum of attention scores uh, are, but, uh, this, uh, this time make sure that the sum of the attention scores that each block I receives is in decoding is one. So in this way, we can guide the model to attend all regions in the input image. So this figure shows the visualization of att attention during the uh, decoding. And this uh, loss function corresponds to the soft version of the uh, uh, coverage. So as we can see, uh, mostly all regions are attended during the decoding uh, because of this uh, constraint. The similar idea is introduced in neural machine translation. Um, this work incorporates neural networks that manage updates of coverage vectors that keep track of uh, translated content during decoding. And the second attempt is round trip translation to improve the performance of neural machine translation. Here is the standard machine translation from English to Japanese. I have a pen to pen o motsu in Japanese. In addition to this, we reconstruct the source sentence by using an additional model for neural machine translation from Japanese to English. Pen o motsu to I have a pen. We train the whole translation model from English to Japanese and back to English in the end-to-end -end fashion because the translation model must reconstruct the source sentence uh, from to generate the uh, original sentence. So in this way, we can guide the hidden layer to keep all information of the source sentence. Unfortunately, we cannot apply these ideas directly to the task of headline generation. The previous attempt assumes lossless uh, generation, where the model is expected to generate an output covering all information in the source. The previous work guided the model to keep the entire information of the source in the hidden layers. It checked the coverage of the source information by using explicit supervision signals such as attention coverage or um, a hidden uh, or the 
a round trip translation. However, the task of headline generation is lossy. So what we can get from the supervision data are pairs of lead sentences and the uh, uh, lead, lead sentences and headlines. So we have no supervision data for alignment between source sentence and headlines. So in other words, uh, we don't have information about which pieces of source information are lost or used in uh, headlines. Now I will explain our proposal. The base, base model is a standard encoder, uh, encoder decoder model with attention. So we have a source sentence, a Tokyo stock closed higher on Tuesday, and uh, we want to uh, uh, generate a sentence, a headline sentence, Tokyo stock ends higher. And we represent uh, the source sentence with a sequence of one hot vectors, and then we embed uh, this one hot vector uh, with our word embeddings. Then we compute the uh, hidden states of decoder by attending the uh, hidden states of encoders. Then we make predictions like uh, Tokyo stock and higher by softmax operation. So in essence, we generate a uh, one hot vector like this to obtain Tokyo stock and higher. So we optimize the parameters in the model such that the log like effect of the model is maximized. So in other words, uh, we want to have a model that can pro uh, reproduce the headline Tokyo stocks and higher from the sentence Tokyo stocks close higher on Tuesday. Then we make few modifications to the base model. First, we append dummy part token at the end of the uh, output sentence. So in lossy compression, uh, this is uh, the number of input words is uh, longer than the number of output words. So we add path tokens here in order to consider all information in the source sentence. Then uh, we, pre we predict a source word at each time step by using the hidden state in the decoder. This prediction here are also probability distribution of words computed by softmax. And we can think these vectors as a soft version of one hot vector of the input words. And in order to give a supervision signal for prediction result of the source words, we sum up the predicted one hot vectors and guide the training to reconstruct the sum of the one hot vectors in the source height. So we add a term in the loss function to guide the to guide to reconstruct the sum of the one hot vectors of the predicted uh, tokens and the source tokens uh, will be closed. Um, please notice that we don't need any supervision data for the alignment in this model. Taking the sum of one hot vectors, we only care for sentence level coverage, and we do not have give, we, we do not have to give which source word is associated with which word in a target or a dummy part token. And this page shows the performance of the proposed method. The ENCDEC plus S gate is the previous work uh, where the model has a gating mechanism to control uh, the appropriate words from the source. So ENCDEC plus S gate, also called as SEASS, was the previous state of the art method. The ENCDEC plus SPM here is the proposed method. As we can see from this table, the proposed method mostly outperforms the encoder decoder plus escape. And we can further improve the performance by combining the proposed method with the idea of escape. So this is the current state of the art performance. The visualization below shows the source side prediction provi provides discrete, discrete correspondence between the source and the target. The source sentence, uh, Tokyo stocks close higher, is aligned correctly with Tokyo stock ends higher. And this uh, source side prediction module can align uh, unnecessary information like uh, straight or Tuesday to part tokens. 
And this slide shows some example of output from the baseline encoder decoder model and the proposed method. Uh, there are gold headline, and this is a baseline encoder decoder model, and uh, this is the output from the proposed method. And we can see here a uh, repetition in baseline encoder decoder model, but uh, this uh, proposed method could avoid this repetition. And uh, we also uh, noticed uh, uh, lack of important phrases in the baseline encoder decoder model, like NY. But uh, this model, uh, the proposed method, can generate a uh, uh, headline with a lot of information. And we can also confirm that the uh, uh, irrelevant phrase can be reduced. And we can measure the number of the, uh, these improvements, but I, I omit uh, this in information in this presentation. Um, any questions so far? Okay. Okay, so now move to the I, I move to the next second topic, proofread sentence generation with edit operation prediction. Um, this is a collaborated work with Asahi Shinbun, which is a Japanese newspaper company. So let me explain the background of this research. So here is an article uh, published by Associated Press. And this is uh, nothing special, but this is this article just explains the earning of a bank. But uh, we can notice a sentence stating that this article is generated by automated insights using the data from Zach's investment, investment research. So in other words, this article is generated automatically from a data source. And there is a trend in newspaper companies uh, that uh, they want to reduce the cut, reduce the cost for uh, producing uh, uh, newspaper articles. So the goal of automated journalism or robot journalism is to generate newspaper articles automatically from the data source. As you may probably imagine, the current state of automa automated journalism is far from the perfect. The current system uses crafted rules to generate a sentence from a data source. This is why the current system has limited application domains, weather forecasts, sports results, and company earnings, and so on. We can say that the current system generates a high-quality article for a set of limited domains, Although we can train encoder decoder model for generating articles from data sources, but the generated articles are too poor to apply to the real system of newspaper production. So we take a different approach, analyzing the daily activities of news production to explore what a good news article is. Then we build a model to improve the quality of a text. Asahi Shinbun, the newspaper company, stores an original article written by reporters and its final version revised by the uh, editors. So we extract uh, this number of articles published by Asahi Shinbun from uh, this period. And sorry in Japanese example, but this is original article and this is a revised one. So this is a, a original article posted by uh, reporters and the desk will revise this content to uh, make the final version to be appear in website or newspaper articles. And this data only has pairs of original and revised articles. So there is no revision history. So we cannot, uh, we, we don't have any information about alignment between these uh, sentences. So this is, there is a sentence here, sentence A, and this sentence corresponds to a uh, small a in the final version. So in order to obtain alignment between sentence and sentences, uh, we compute the similarity between uh, sentences in original article and revised articles. So in this example, the first sentence, large A, is aligned to the small a, and the second sentence, large B, is aligned to the two sentences, uh, small c and small d. So, and these elements are estimated by sentence similarity. 
So in this way, uh, we could obtain about uh, two million pairs of original and revised sentences. And half of them are unchanged during uh, revising, and half of them are changed during revising. And uh, we can we predict edit operation between uh, sentences, sentences, uh, original version and revised version by using the algorithm of Levenstein distance. So, for example, uh, sorry again in Japanese example. Uh, so this part is removed in the final version, and this uh, letter ga is inserted in the final version, and so on. So we can re reconstruct uh, this kind of edit operation from the data. And we can also uh, discuss what is good article uh, from this log, because we can compute the mean of Levenstein distance, and the actually the mean of Levenstein distance between changed pair was uh, 15. So we, uh, the desk will edit uh, the source sentence quite a lot. And we can know that uh, about half of the total edit operation were replacement for one word or two words. And this page shows the proposed met modification to the standard encoder architecture for proofread sentence generation. So we assume an original sentence as an input to an encoder decoder model, and it revised sentence as an output from the encoder decoder model. And this is similar to the previous task summarization. But we guide the training of the model with an uh, additional task to predict edit operation. So this is a standard encoder decoder architecture from uh, this original sentence to a uh, proofread sentence. But uh, we, uh, we add an uh, additional module to pre pre predict the edit operation between uh, these uh, two sentences. Like this is keep and this is delete token, this is keep token and this is replace token and so on. So we can regard uh, the proposed method as a joint model of error correction and error detection for mis misspelled words, uh, incorrect kanji usage and so on. And the, this table shows the performance of proofread sentence generation. The proposed architecture, uh, gem plus spread, uh, or gem plus uh, attention. And so in this setting, we use attention mechanism to predict edit operation. <coughs> and we can observe improvement from the uh, standard uh, encoder decoder model by using the proposed method. And if we focus on uh, changed pairs and unchanged pairs, uh, the blue score or the performance of the unchanged pair uh, is lower than the unchanged pair. And this is uh, very natural. So and we find that there are some, a lot of improvement for improving the performance of uh, proofread sentence generation for changed pairs. So this is the end of my talk. So encoder decoder model has a lot of room for improvement, uh, suppressing odd generation or multitask learning for the application. Uh, we have to handle unknown word problems. And we want to control the length of the output. And we want to incorporate broader context. And I have another project for mining opinions on the web with external knowledge. And I want to integrate external knowledge on into a deep learning model, but I don't explain this in this presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. We have some time for questions. Any questions or comments? Is there anything more about actual knowledge? So this is a task I want to explore. So uh, in this task, we want to determine a stance of each text towards TPP. And there are, uh, there are three sentences. I totally agree with TPP. And it's better to promote domestic uh, consumption. And it's better to promote free trade. And if we 
use a supervision data for this topic TPP, we can build a probabilistic model uh, using deep learning to predict the stance towards TPP. This is against, this is against, and this is favor. But it is impractical to uh, prepare supervision data for all topics like Trump or nuclear power plant and so on. So we want to decompose this task into topic independent uh, knowledge like uh, these are the patterns to express uh, disagreement and this is a pattern to express agreement. And we need additional external knowledge like uh, domestic consumption is suppressed by TPP and free trade is promoted by TPP. So we, I want to extract uh, this kind of knowledge uh, automatically from SNS. And we use, uh, we use a simple idea. So we create a matrix representing which user favors which topic and which user dislike which topic. Then we apply a similar idea to item recommendation to uh, find a uh, topic to topic uh, correspondence. And then uh, we can obtain uh, this kind of uh, knowledge like uh, those who agreed with uh, this topic and those who disagreed with this topic will probably agree with this topic and this, uh, disagree with this topic. And we want to encode this kind of knowledge into deep learning model to make a uh, uh, final stance detection model. Any other questions or comments? So I have one question. Okay. So if you apply proofread editing method uh, many times to one sentence, just to apply the method to an uh, original sentence and the edited sentence would be generated and then same method would be applied again, then does that sequentially improve your method? Or, uh, it turns out to be the completely different sentences. Mm, that's a good question. Um, actually, I didn't, we didn't apply repeatedly to the uh, output from the model, but it may improve the uh, generated sentence, but we are not sure, so I want to try. Thank you. So any more questions or comments? All right, then let's move on to the next section, the next talk and th thank again.